Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about Crypto.com and its current uh, purchase of the Staples naming rights. Now, if you like these kinds of videos, like, comment, and subscribe, and follow this till the end so you can get the full gist of the information. And definitely check out our Patreon for exclusive stuff. Now, before we continue, I just gotta say this is not financial advice, and we don't accept any liabilities for losses that you might incur. Strictly here for research and use purposes. So with that in mind, you'll be able to enjoy the content of this video. Crypto.com token. Now, I wanted to get this video out earlier, but due to technical issues, we weren't able to get it out earlier. But we did mention it. We were, we, we re, we're refilming this video and we did this when Crow is at 50 cents right before it went pa parabolic about uh, at this point right here. So it's been a little while and the information is still very valuable and I wanted to bring it to you guys because you know what? Definitely don't want to miss the boat on this one. So crypto.com. I've said it many times. It's an awesome uh, crypto service. Very versatile. Does a lot of things. And it's definitely earned its spot in the top in the top uh, 20 cryptos. Should be in the top 10 relatively soon, in my opinion, just because of how versatile the actual app is and how easy it is to use for any crypto user. But today we're going to be talking about this. So as I mentioned before, they bought the Staples Center, like the, the naming rights, right? And that is a $700 million deal. That is huge in Los Angeles, which is already a very busy city. And one of the things that I definitely got to say is this. Crypto.com, they have an incredible strategy and marketing team because they've decided to go in the one place where everyone is always going to be happy to watch, and that's sporting events. They got into fighting. They're in the UFC. They're in hockey. They're in football. They're in basketball now. They're getting into every major sporting event, and they're everywhere. Think about how many people are constantly watching sports. The conversion of potential clients and users for this app is phenomenal just based off of that. So the marketing team, the strategy behind it is incredible. Whatever they're doing, naturally they're going to keep doing it because it's working for them. And, you know, one of the things that blows my mind is like, A, how far has crypto come where now they're, like crypto in general, that they're that they're they're buying naming rights in general to to stadiums it's definitely a big step forward because years ago we would not have been thinking about like oh this is going to be something that happens it's like no no we didn't think like that now we're at a point where it's clearly like oh crypto.com just bought that crypto.com just think of the name crypto it's no longer stigmatized it's breaking the stigma of crypto it's going to become normalized soon and once it's normalized don't be surprised when mainstream adoption of this kind of technology happens. And with the dollar tanking, things, assets like this, they become much more valuable because they're magnetic to inflation. As more money goes in, the value of the tokens go up. It's simply funding economics by the basis of a stock model. So it's very interesting how this is actually coming up. And one of the things that makes me laugh is this, right? They mention here, you don't have to call Staples Center by its goofy new name. Guys, the fact that they're trying to dismiss this as something that's small, first of all, is ridiculous. And the reason it's ridiculous is because A, that's a $700 million naming right. How dumb do you got to be to dismiss something big like that? If that's not a sign that mainstream adoption is right around the corner, then I don't know what is. This is a clear cut sign that we're right around the corner we are in price discovery mode mainstream adoption is right after that and once that happens all cryptos even the shitty ones are going to pop off but until then they're going to come up with as many ways as possible to hold it down but the thing is, is you can't hold things down forever and the reality is that the more you tell people not to buy something or use something the more likely they are to use it. And the fact that they've been constantly saying, don't 
call it by the new name. Don't use crypto. Don't this. It's a Ponzi scheme. It's that. And meanwhile, everything they're doing dictates that their scheme is a Ponzi scheme from a bank perspective. Because think about it. The bank prints money. So now you print all this money. Then you distribute it. And then the whole point is to get it back to get it back from the people in their taxes. But the issue is, is that they're raising the money supply and they're raising the taxes, but they're not actually distributing the money into the economy. And that's how you have severe inflation. That's how you know that inflation is a marker uh, based off of just money velocity. And money velocity is just how much money moves around. In order for an economy to function, money has to move and taxes have to be paid. That's how the system works. That's how you keep inflation in check. But when you're getting 30 to 40% inflation rates, it's a sign that the money isn't moving. So the banks are printing it and then it's just being distributed in the government. And you could say, oh, well, all this government spending is going to places. Well, prove it. Can't. Because there's no public ledger that could prove it. And the reality is, is that where is all the money going? Nowhere. Nothing has gotten better. It's gone nowhere. Even Justin Trudeau, $240 billion that is unaccounted for from the SERP of the $400 billion. So my point is, is that public ledgers are the next stage. And things like this, the Staples Center becoming Crypto.com Center, is just a sign that this kind of money is coming. And I'm not going to go too much into the money supply now because I'm here to talk about Crow. But the reality is, is that we're at a point now where sports stadiums are being named after crypto and Crypto.com. And Crypto.com is definitely one of the best apps out there simply because they offer so much in such a user-friendly atmosphere. And I'm going to tell you guys something, right? So basically, I use the lending protocol with the Crypto.com app, right? And I'm going to warn you guys now, be careful when using that app or using that part of the app, specifically the lending protocol part of the app. Because what did happen to me was I took a loan because, um, you know, I wanted to take a loan just to see how the functionality of the app works. But the jurisdiction that I'm in, Canada, Quebec, for example, changed its laws recently. So because it changed the laws, it caused a bug in the app. And I wasn't able to uh, pay back my loan right away as well as access my crypto. So the bug kind of got mixed up and it was a serious issue. And I was stressing about it for a bit. And then when I contacted support, they actually pulled through and got me to my funds before December 2nd, which would have caused me to lose all my crow. Now, that's a sign that the app is good because A, they didn't allow me to basically lose my crow, which they very well could have. There's nothing protecting that. They got to me in a timely manner. I was earlier than the December 2nd uh, deadline, which would have cost me to lose my money. They have millions of users and they managed to get 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 this solved, which makes me very happy. And I wanted to mention that today in this video, on this reshoot of this video, simply because you know what? If I had any doubts about this app, after the way they handled that whole situation where I wasn't able to access my funds and they got me access to my funds and they made sure that I didn't lose my money that I have accumulated or the crow that I have accumulated for the last two years by, you know, just using the app. It made me feel better about this app because they didn't just leave it. They weren't just allowing me to like lose my money. And that's very important for any app because from there, if the team is willing to actually walk you through this shit and make sure that you don't lose your money, that's a sign that you could trust them. Because if you couldn't trust them, they would have just allowed the protocol to take the money and swallow it, and then they would have profited free crow. And that's not exactly a good business model. So they're definitely legit, and their business model is solid. And that's where I wanted to come here and, 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 and bring this to a full circle talking about this. So Crypto.com coin has utility compelling to crypto skeptics. So a lot of people have been talking about shit saying that Crow is skeptical, blah, blah, blah. A, I just gave you that information, meaning they helped me get my money out, which is extremely important for me and for anyone who's willing to join this app, simply because they actually helped me work through the problem, through the support, which 
you know, if you went through a bank, it could have taken a lot longer. This is surprisingly quick. So I'm happy about that. Now, this is more or less, you know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, another point too. They mentioned here that Matt Damon is one of the sponsors of crypto.com. And I believe that because A, he was in the commercial and he says, fortune favors the brave. So it's like they are marketing themselves excellently here. They've chosen sports stadiums. They've chosen actors that people love. And, you know, like, I like to see this. This is what I like to see in a project. And now, just going over some of the utilities, right? So, it mentions here that the app is extremely uh, user-friendly, obviously, but also that it has more than 10 million users, which is fucking awesome. And then these are the features. So, most notable, buying and selling crypto as a broker. So, it functions more as a broker than as an exchange, in my in my personal view because as a broker it's just selling you crypto at a slight premium whereas if it was an exchange it would function more like binance or kucoin or bitrex where it's like you see the graphs and you're able to play it a little bit more technical with lower fees but for the most part like uh it has that it's good it has the buying and selling crypto and you could use the crypto.com exchange and it's very functional and it works very well you could buy NFTs on their platform, which is pretty cool. Granted, I don't like I have a few. I have the Aston Martin uh, lineup, but um, you know, what I mean, the fact that they have it there and they have name big name people behind it, it shows that it's definitely it's definitely awesome to have NFTs accessible in such an easy way. That's something that's great about it. Uh, they have the Crypto.com Visa card, which we've covered it on the channel before and i'll mention it to anyone who's watching it definitely check out the the crow visa card because it's it's definitely valuable compared to every other visa and visa's already announced global partnership with them so if you want to know more about that go on our other crow videos and you could really dig deep into it because we've broken it down properly and this is what i this is what i mentioned here access to loans so definitely be careful accessing loans because if it switches in your jurisdiction, you'll have to contact support to get your money out and it could become an issue because it becomes a bug. But the feature worked very well. I've used the feature more than once. It wasn't the first time I used it. That's why I was comfortable doing it. The issue is, is that I, I didn't know that uh, jurisdiction laws change. So for something like access to loans, if you ever decide to use it, I would say pay back your loan quickly. Don't let it sit there. And B, if anything, don't use it until the jurisdiction has set the laws. That's really the ideal situation. So once you know that the laws are set and crypto uh, crypto is allowed to give loans like in general, because right now they're having a lot of issues fighting the banks and the governments for that kind of power. Because to do that, it's like they are literally cutting out the banks and the banks are not giving up that easily. So the access to the loans, just be careful when you use it. Because if it changes in your jurisdiction, you're going to have to go through support like I did probably. And if it's okay in your jurisdiction and it's set, then access the loans and pay them back quickly. I mean, the interest is like 50 or 60 cents a day. Like it's very, very small. It's very, it's a very, very, very low interest loan. You could earn up to 14%, 14.5% annually on your crypto. So it's like they have a lot of staking protocols in place. And just on your crow, you get incredible rewards. So even if you're staking crow at six or eight percent on a thousand bucks, that's still money. On ten thousand dollars, that's quite a bit. So anyone who has access to a large amount of crow, it's worth it for them to stake it because you're staking in a network that's valuable. It has value. It has use case by being a functional app. Interest from DeFi protocols, yeah, that's 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 more or less the same idea as like staking. You know what I mean? You're staking in a DeFi protocol versus just staking in the network. It's the same thing, more or less. Maybe different re rewards to a certain degree, but they have staking in the app, which is fucking awesome. And the other thing, accepting crypto payments as a merchant. That's fucking cool. So they're able to get you access to merchants so you could spend your crypto and actually do things. And the other thing that's, adds credibility to it is it's EMI license. So it's electronic money institution license for Malta financial services, meaning Malta has been a place where people have 
always stored their money and you know used as a tax free haven where big players go a lot of a lot of financial institutions go there and the fact that they're there they have their spot they have their licenses that's a big thing and a big thing like that does not just go under the radar so i've mentioned that in a previous video as well so they mentioned here crypto.com partnerships i'll go over them fast fast they got they got ledger they're in a partnership with ledger uh, meaning that all their cryptocurrencies are stored in offline cold storage with Ledger, which is awesome because then you know that your stuff is offline. They have several important partnerships, as you can see here, F1, UFC, Paris Saint-Germain, Aston Martin, which is the NFTs that I mentioned. And using Formula One, it's it's like, it's a, it's a good platform. A lot of people a lot of people are there you know what i mean so they got sports they got formula one they're just constantly taking on entertainment and we've known something from the beginning of this last especially these last two years in 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 covid how important entertainment is when there's nothing to do and entertainment is 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 valuable in every sense everyone's gonna pay to be entertained so the fact that they're going after entertainment as their main marketing strategy they've done a very good job they made a good decision to do that. So that's more or less going to wrap up my video on all this. Um, for the most part, I would definitely say that this is a solid, a solid uh, coin pick as well as a solid platform. And especially after the way they handled my support request and I didn't lose my money, it made me have a lot more faith in the company. So with that in mind, Definitely check out our Patreon. Our Discord's going to be up soon. We're in the process of bringing more researchers and more moderators and building an infrastructure so that way you guys could be received. I'm going to mention it one more time. The amount of people that are going to be able to join the Discord is going to be limited. So the first round is going to be at 25 bucks a month and it'll be limited to 100 users. So the first come, first serve. Then the second wave is going to be the same benefits for $50 a month, first come, first serve, only 100 people. Then the last the last round will be a $100 per month. More or less same benefits, maybe some extra stuff. We're still deciding that. But regardless, only 100 people. So we're going to limit the amount of people that are going to be in that Discord. It's going to be very exclusive. And... After that, the only way you're going to be able to get in is through a meta key. So after our first three rounds are set, the only way into the channel is with a meta key. And the starting price, we still have yet to set it. So definitely better off joining the Patreon. Or if you want the key, you could, you could get the key too. So take care.